It's finally here. The secret project that I hinted at in my channel update video a couple of weeks ago. So what is this project all about? When will this project be released to the world? All of these questions will be answered in today's video. Hey front, my name's Alex from the Programming Juvenile and welcome back to another video. About half... I should probably check this working out. About halfway through January 2020, I started working on a new secret project. Not enough progress was being made with my previous game because most of the Project Paradox team were away on holiday break. So I needed something to keep myself busy. And now, a little under a month later, here we are. Welcome to Lone Wolf Dub Dub 2. This game will give you the experience that thousands went through all those years ago during World War II. This game is set during one of the most tragic time periods in human history. During this tragic time, an estimate of 75 million people died. Hundreds of thousands of these were pilots, and I feel their story is not told nearly often as it should. So in this game, you'll experience how intense and scary it was to be flying above in those dark times. Giving the millions of soldiers down there the air support they need while still majorly risking your own life. So in this devlog series, I'll be sharing with all of you the progress this game makes from the start all the way to the end of development. I don't have any plans for once this game is finished, but I'll try to put this game on as many platforms as possible, including Windows, Macs, Linux, iOS and Android. This isn't the first big project I've worked on over the years. I've actually made many games at this scale, so I feel I should be able to manage everything. For the most part, I'm planning to develop this game by myself, but I have one of my friends that's working on the soundtrack of the game and one of my friends who's working on a bit of the artwork. And of course, with the help of all of you watching, this game should be finished in no time. After the first week of development, I started working on a very basic roadmap so I would never get behind schedule, and I've decided that I'll aim to release this game at the start of June this year. So that's about four months away from now, so should be plenty of time if I stay committed. Over these months, I'll be trying to make these devlogs as frequent as possible, in which I'll be going over everything I've done, from adding something to the game to any struggles that have been putting a bit of a spanner in the works. So now you have a very brief idea of what the game's all about, and how this series is <coughs> so now you have a very brief idea of what the game's all about and how this series is going to work, let's get into what I've got so far. So over these first few weeks of development, I've set up many systems that run in the background of this game, like the random map generation, the altitude and shadow systems, and then the control board down here on the bottom of the screen. Let me explain how the game's random world generation works. Firstly, the world is generated in chunks. Each chunk is about the same size as the screen. I've designed the random generation to choose one of the custom made chunks from a long list and spawn it in as soon as the previous chunk has just fully entered the screen, meaning there is a constant flow of generation. No, 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 stop. Don't look at that. It, it's still a work in progress, okay? Another system I want to explain is the altitude and shadows. For this project, I had to somehow make the player feel like he was flying above everything in the game while still being in a 2D environment, so I decided to add shadows to the game. I made a small component that I can add to any game object in the game, which takes the object's Y position and its altitude and creates a shadow object that follows the game object's X position while keeping the Y position the same so that shadow is always following the game object. But over the past few weeks, the main thing I've been focusing on is adding new buildings and planes to the game. I've spent a lot of time drawing up new buildings templates and trying out different color schemes for them all because I want there to be a very large variety of buildings set up in the game. Over the development of this game I am planning to, on dedicating at least one to three hours every week to drawing new buildings so that once the game's released there is plenty for the player to drop bombs on or crash into. This will also mean there will be plenty of variety through the whole game meaning the player is less likely to get bored of what they're seeing. I've also been working a lot on all the health systems for the game. When you start the game you have a full health bar and shield bar. These are clearly shown in the corner of the screen. It's fine to get hit while you still have some shield left in the bar but once you get hit without any shield left in the bar your plane starts to get damaged. As you can see here every time you get hit without shield your plane starts to malfunction. At random one of your planes may 
main functionalities will start to not work at its peak. If you get hit enough times, all your plane's main functionalities will start to malfunction and then you'll need to be very careful as you continue. Eventually though, if your plane continues to lose health, you will lose your engines and slowly fall back down to earth and crash. Over the next few weeks, I'm planning to just continue adding random things to the game. Since this is a very early stage of development, I just need to keep working and working slowly to slowly give this game as much of an identity as possible. I'm going to be adding things like new enemy planes, cars, better roads, cities and much more. I'll also be working hard on creating new custom areas to the game. The more areas I add the better because it will make the game feel fresh for longer than if there was just one area repeating itself over and over again. But also since the game can kind of look a little complicated at times with all the altitude systems and fueling etc. I'll be spending a lot of time with friends getting them to test it out and giving me recommendations to make the game feel better for the players because they're the people that are going to play it more than me. Because as a developer it can be very hard to notice if some controls are clunky or if a game is way too hard. Because since I spend so much time creating each mechanic I kind of get used to most of the problems before actually noticing them. That's why I have some pretty cool news. Every single time I release a new devlog, I'll be uploading an updated alpha version of the game to the community discord. I have it all set up over there and ready on the community discord, so as soon as this video releases, you should be able to go straight over to the discord and test it out. So jump on, give it a play, and if you have any cool ideas or suggestions to improve upon the game, there are plenty of channels on the discord for your voice to be heard. So, if you haven't already, make sure to join the community discord, it's tons of fun over there. Especially with the new music section that I've set up. I mean, it's, it's pretty bangers. <laughs> anyway, that brings us to the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. So make sure, if you're not already, to join the newly branded community discord and follow us on Instagram. There will be links below and in the cards to help you find your way to your destination. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so I know to remind you when a new video is released. Also, make sure you smash that like button. And with that, I hope you all have an incredible next few weeks. And if all goes to plan, I will be seeing you again soon. See ya.